All right, episode 59. Holy shit, did this week suck. We are moving this week, and wow, has it been just a stressful experience. Thankfully, I think the worst part of it is behind us because all of our stuff is officially now like out of our house and on a moving truck right now, which is why I'm sitting in my car because we don't have any seats. But the only positive thing I think about like the act of moving is getting rid of all of the not essential shit that you just have laying around. Um, there's always way more stuff than didn't that you like anticipated. Um, I'd say the most joy that I've had this week is realizing that our last trash day was a bulk load day and it lined up perfectly with the move. But other than that, it's been pretty rough. Let's talk about all of the negatives. It's a test on your patience, uh, your your physical strength, your wallet, your relationship even. And I am just, I'm exhausted right now. And when you prepare for a move, it's not just like a quick week of planning. It's like a slow, just like suffocation, right? It slowly starts just taking up more and more of your personal time. You're buying boxes and organizing a bit at first and then... Next thing you know, you've sold your couch, you're sitting on the ground, you're cleaning out a nightstand, and then you've got like a random person in route because they want to buy some of your shit that you're selling on Facebook Marketplace. It's just a wild experience. And we are just like so ready for this to be done. Um, I looked it up and apparently the average American moves 11.7 times in their life. And I was trying to figure out like how many times I've already moved in my life. And I think I concluded that I'm sitting like this will be my eighth lifetime move which is good news i'm over halfway so hopefully there's just not too many more of these this is definitely the biggest move i've ever done though this is our first like actual house load of shit move i guess and it's also our first out of state move um moving to and from college wasn't like too bad because you're basically just responsible for things like maybe like a tv a few hampers of clothes and and a desk but then your first apartment, you upgrade to things like a couch, uh, maybe some other like living room furniture, some kitchen essentials, and maybe like an ironing board. And now we've just reached peak house move, which includes packing a living room, a kitchen, three bedrooms. It's just so much shit. And we're not even like, we're not even touching our backyard or a garage. We're just like throwing all that shit out, basically. And lately, I think I've just been very cognizant of interior design. And anytime I see or I'm in a room with a lot of stuff in it, I'm just like, wow, this must be a bitch to move. Like, have you ever get served those cool like interior design, like social media accounts? Um, I'm getting a lot of reels right now about like lamps and mood lighting and like cool random like hipster finds. But Now I'm just thinking about like how expensive and time consuming it must be if these influencers ever move. Like their whole deal is around getting new shit in their homes and they just must have like so much shit. And I can only imagine like what it's like moving with like a baby or a small kid. Like that just must be, that must be like a living hell. You'd be all boxed in. You're just like ready to snap at any moment. And I've had like a few moves under my belt as a kid. And I never looked at it as like a pain in the ass. It was always like so exciting, right? But now when you're responsible for all of the logistics behind the move, like it sucks. There are just so many like random things that you need to do. For example, on top of moving, we're also going to rent out our current house. And that just like welcomes a shitload of like paperwork and hassle And then there's like these little house projects that I've put off the entire time of actually like living in the house. I'm painting, I'm like deep cleaning, I'm repairing stuff. I broke out like a caulking gun the other day. It's just, it's a mess. My wife asked me if I'm sad that we won't be living here anymore. But I don't really think like I'm sad about it because I still see the expense from it. Like I'm not getting rid of the house. I think I'll be more sad when we decide to sell it. Um, and I mainly think this because I'm still like, I'm still attached to it in a way, right? Like, even though I won't be living in it, I'm still responsible for it and like want to put all this care into it, you know? But yeah, that's why I'm doing all these little fucking bullshit projects and it's driving me insane. Despite my negative thoughts on the act of moving though, I'm not sad about the move whatsoever. I'm actually very excited that we are going to be moving and like, transitioning into this new just phase of our lives I think we're both of us are just like ready for it to be done 
like I said, it'll be our first out of state move, which is exciting. We both moved cities for college, um, but we've never left the state. Um, really, I think it'll be a nice little change for us, though. She'll be in her residency program. Um, I work remotely right now, so it's not going to be all brand new for me, which is also kind of nice. And we'll get to experience some some little city living, you know. We're moving into a nice apartment where I've got, like, every type of food within, like, a 10-minute walk. I've got, like, three coffee shops within, like, a five-minute walk. It's going to be it's gonna be fun. And neither of us have ever actually, like, lived in the heart, of like, a downtown of a city, right? So we've always lived in, like, these suburban areas on the outskirts of like larger cities so it'll be exciting but usually change is really rough for me I am generally a change averse type of person I like routine a lot and specifically right now my routine has just been fucked by all of this change you got all of the like the packing and the clutter and then you also are like going on this massive like goodbye tour with all of your friends and family which is nice it's just extreme it's like it's an extremely busy time but I know this overall will be a very good change. And I think as I get older, I need to start like embracing change a little more than I have in the past. Um, a lot of change has come in the past few months with a marriage, a new job, and now a move. That's like the, the late 20s trifecta right there. And we're doing it all within six months. So it's kind of crazy. But I recently found out there are seven reasons why we should embrace change in our lives. First, growth and personal development. Reason being, change challenges our adaptability and learning in life. And by having to adapt to the new environment we're exposed to, we, in a sense, grow. I love personal growth. I'm all about personal growth. I like the idea of being able to shift your mindset and make a challenge look like an opportunity. Personally, I'm not the best at this, and I envy people who are able to think this way consistently, but maybe maybe we'll get there with age. Number two, innovation and progress. Embracing change builds innovation and progress, pushing us to explore new ideas and approaches. When we embrace change, we're expanding our minds, which helps us to be more creative and intake a variety of ideas personally i like this one i like the idea of welcoming new concepts for creative purposes not only is it like beneficial for me but also for this podcast obviously it keeps me talking about some new shit that i'm experiencing number three new opportunities change brings new opportunities opening doors we haven't considered before our life is filled with dramatic shifts and unexpected occurrences, and throughout the process, we might bump into opportunities that can be life-changing. This one actually reminded me of one story that you'll often hear in a lot of like various uh, self-help books and podcasts, but it's the story of the Chinese farmer. I'll give you guys kind of like a little quick notes version here of the of the tale, but. So the farmer's horse ran away, prompting neighbors to call it bad luck, right? The farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. The next day, the horse returned with a bunch of wild horses. The neighbor saw this as good luck, and then the farmer said again, maybe so, maybe not. When the farmer's son uh, broke a leg, taming one of the wild horses, the neighbor saw it again as bad luck. The farmer repeated, maybe so, maybe not. Then the following day, the military comes into the area and is recruiting all of the boys and men but then left the farmer's son uh, due to the injury, which the neighbors then saw as good luck. The farmer still responded, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. But basically what it boils down to is you don't see life as good or bad, it just is. And you should live life kind of being mindful of your experiences because everything changes and nothing is ever really black and white. Anyways, good story. On to number four, enhanced perspective. Embracing change helps broaden our perspective, allowing us to see the world in different angles. The more we enhance our perspective, the more we'll gain knowledge of how the world adapts. All right, number five, lifelong learning. So lifelong learning will change our character over time. The more knowledge we gain, the more perspective we gain in improving ourselves. Lifelong learning is all about finding growth in our life, creating a more sustainable lifestyle to live by. Number six, resilience. In the fast-paced world we live in today, we need to constantly change and build resilience. There will always be difficulties in life, but we must understand how to overcome them. The moment we persevere and overcome these difficulties, it helps strengthen our mindset. 
For me, enhanced perspective, lifelong learning, and resilience is basically, in my mind, like the summary of Obstacle is the Way, which is a great book that I recommend everyone to either read or listen to. It's pretty short. But it comes down to the more obstacles that you overcome, the better off that you are because you're wiser and you know how to basically handle life a little better. Finally, number seven, greater flexibility. So embracing change helps us become more flexible while helping us work around different situations. Flexibility ties back to the concept of adaptability and finding ways to use our knowledge. So quick summary, we've got growth and personal development, innovation and progress, new opportunities, enhanced perspective, lifelong learning, resilience, and greater flexibility. Overall, though, I will be very happy when this little transition period is over and we can actually start enjoying the new changes that are coming our way. Um, I'm looking forward to kind of getting into a really good, like, solid routine again without any, like, unforeseen major obstacles looming over our heads. So that will be nice, too. But anyways, I think that's I think that's all I've got for this week. Thank you for listening. Um, my next episode will officially be in a new setting, so that's very exciting. But yeah, I've gotta I've gotta still do some deep cleaning around the entire house. I've gotta get out of this car, this garage. I've got a lot of stuff to do. So big move, yeah, big stuff coming. But anyways, thank you for being a part of the journey. I appreciate it, and yeah, talk to you next week.